Hi, I'm Al Martinez, and welcome to Untrashed. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take a bit of trash that everybody gets daily, weekly, whatever. And instead of throwing it away, I'm going to show you some of the things you can do with it. So today, what we're going to do, because it's close to Halloween, close enough for some people, is we're going to make a flying bat. And here's one that I made some time ago. And this one I used, I used wood and I used some dowels and I used screws and a whole bunch of other stuff. The wings here are made from milk carton, which we made some dragons in the in previous shows. So this kind of item is called an automata. An automata is uh, the term used for a mechanical or articulate toy. So as you can see, this has a little handle here and it's got a crank here. So when you turn the crank, the wings flap. So this is relatively simple and that's what we're going to tackle today. So the things that you're going to need, the materials that you're going to need is you're going to need some cardboard and you're going to need a couple of pizza boxes. Now everybody knows that there's different kinds of bats. There's fruit bats, there's vampire bats. We're gonna make a pizza bat. So we're gonna take this pizza box and we're gonna cut it open. And we're gonna use this material to actually make the bat. So I just use a regular kitchen knife to cut this open. And I like these um, I like these pizza boxes because this card is pretty good for making templates or making things like bats. So sometimes you can get them with uh, brown or white paper inside. And once you've cut it open, you've got plenty of material here that you can ply with. So they don't have to be this size, and you can make your bat whatever size you want. I'm just going to show you how to make one the size that I'm using today of pizza box. So once you've got your pizza box open, what I've done is I've taken one of these and I've drawn some lines on here. So this is 12 inches square. So I'm going to do a center line here. Just draw a line. Now, I only do this because I like to practice how to be a bit precise. You don't have to be precise. You can do this all freehand. But what I've done is I've done that to give me some reference of the wings are going to be like this and the body's going to be like that. So because I've done this before, I'll show you some of the progress steps. So this is the one that I did yesterday to make the bat that I'm going to show you a little bit later on. So I've drawn the center line here. I've estimated what the span of the wings are and basically drawn a profile of what I think the bat looks like. It doesn't, you don't have to be exactly anatomically correct. You can stylize it however you like. Uh, just so long as for you, it looks like a bat flying. And that's what we're going to try and do today. So I've done that. When I've done that, oh, the other thing, I've drawn two elements here. One of them is the bat itself. And this one in red is another part that's going to be the body. And these little tabs here are going to be what I'm going to glue up to the wings once I shape it a little bit. And I'll show you an example. Well, I'll show you what it looks like when I've cut it out. So that was the bat shape cut out. This one is the tab. So you can see it's got the head, the body, and these little tabs are what I glued to the underside of the bat wings. And that looks like this. So there's my pizza bat. If you look on the underside here, 
you can see that folded up piece of pizza carton and the little tabs glued to the underside of the wings. The other thing I've done is with a pen, I've marked this really heavily and I folded that. So the wings actually have, they have a shape rather than just flopping on a natural curve. And that's just sort of a stylized thing that I like. You can do whatever you like. But anyway, so I've made this part. I've taken some cardboard and I've glued to the, to the underside of the bat and that's going to get glued on top of the frame that we're going to make. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. So the material that I've used, I found this, I found this cardboard box that had a barbecue shipped in it. So it's a big box. And the thing that I liked about it was the fact that the cardboard was exceptionally thick. Because what I was going to do is I was going to recommend that we cut two layers of that size and hot glue them together to make it stiff. So you're going to need one, two pieces that are six inches wide. And this is just 11 inches long, which is the size of that part of the cardboard box. So that's going to be the base. You're going to need four sections like this that are six by six with a hole in the center that's three by three. And that hole is what's going to allow this section here to actually move within the frame. And I'll show you the importance of that a little bit later. So once you've got four of these cut and you hot glue them together, then you cut the hole and you start putting the parts together. So the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need two of these. Again, that's two layers and that's two inches wide and six inches long. So that is going to be part like this, which I'll show you in a minute. So the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need some wire. And I use, I use this wire that I bought at the hardware store. And in terms of the only things that you need to purchase today is the wire. And I think you can get a roll of this for like $6. And you can use it for a lot of things. I use it for all sorts of things. It's just regular steel wire. And um, I'll show you how we use this next. So the next thing I did is I drew a side picture of the inside of that frame. So that frame is going to look like this. And that's just a picture. And the reason I drew this picture is that this part, this heavy black line here, is going to be the crank shaft. So that's the part that actually does the turning and we'll bend, we'll bend this long part down to make a handle later, which I'll show you. So what I did is I took this drawing and I took my wire and I measured from, from the very end here to the end here is 14 inches. So I'm going to cut one piece 14 inches long. And the other thing that I'm going to recommend is when you when you unroll this from the wire from the roll, try and keep it as straight as possible without too many kinks. Because that's important in the way the crank works. So get my wire cutters. And I'll cut a piece 14 inches long. So these, these pliers are called needle nose pliers and they have a point for doing pointy things and they have wire cutting capacity here. So this is really handy to have. So the other thing we're going to need is we're going to need two parts of the crank arms, which is this part that goes from the crank up to the wings. Now, 
those are approximately seven inches. That one's a little bit different than the one we're gonna make. So I'm gonna cut two pieces that are nine inches long, just to be on the safe side. We can always cut it down later once we figure out how long they need to be from the crank shaft to the underside of the wing. So I'm gonna cut two of these at nine inches. One little piece of wire cut. Two little pieces of wires cut. Ah, ah, ah. Everybody knows who that is. Okay, so these parts you want to try and straighten as much as possible. They don't have to be perfect, but just so that they're relatively straight. Because these are the parts that push the wings up when you do the crank. Okay, so got that. This one we want to try and straighten as much as possible. And I'm going to use my drawing here. So I use my drawing also to tell me where it needs to be straighter. Okay, so the idea is that you get your wire as straight along that line as possible. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bend it right here to go down. And then we're going to bend it this way, back up this way, and then back that way. So I'm going to take my, take my pliers. I'm going to grab it right here. And I'm going to make a 90 degree bend. Okay, so this, this first bend is pretty easy because you can only bend it 90 degrees to the wire. The next bend is going to be a little bit more critical. So I'll put that on my drawing. Grab that again. Now, when I bend this, if I look straight down this wire, I want to bend this. I want to bend this wire in line with this one. So when I look down, it's in line with that one, and it's not going up. So that's the first bend. Second one is going to be here. Again, I look this way to make sure everything's in line, and I bend it so that this wire is in that plane and it's not going up this way. So that's the second bend. Now the other thing that is important is that this ends up in line with that. How deep this is, you can vary whether you want your wings to do a little bit of flapping or you want them to do big flaps, okay? The deeper you make this crank, the more movement you get when the arms move up around as it goes around in a circle. So this one's a little bit less than the drawing, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to do this next bend here. Okay, so again, what I do is I line up the wire while looking straight down, and I'm going to bend this towards me. So if I look that way, 
the wire is pretty much in a straight line. It's not going like this down or like this up. So you can always adjust this a little bit. And it doesn't matter if your crank arm is wider or narrower because the, the, the arms that we're going to make, they're pretty thin. So basically that's the start. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make these little arms and we're going to bend little circles on the end and the circles on the end are the ones that are going to grab on here like that. So the circles will actually pivot around as you turn the crank. Now because this wire is thin you need to try and make this little loop on here as small as possible. So I'm going to take the very tip of these pliers and just grab the tip and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see better. That always helps. So then I just bend that. And here's a little trick I learned because my hands are not as strong as they used to be. So I take this and I just roll it on the table like this. And you got a tiny little loop. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna give this a little bit of So that's what you're trying to do. This may take a little practice. I've had a lot of years practice, so I'm, I've done a lot of this because I do jewelry and you have to learn how to make little tiny loops often. So I'll do this one the same way. Grab the tip of that. Here's the table. So I'm pushing down as I'm turning this. to get that loop nice and tight. Okay. So we have those crank arms. We have the crank shaft. So now we can start putting this together. So the other thing we're going to need is we're going to need some spacers between these. So what I've done is I've made some spacers um, and I've made the spacers from regular cardboard. So this, you can see that this wine box, which is regular cardboard, I've used a punch and the punch gives me these cute little circles. So these are the spacers that I'm going to use. So I'm going to punch a little hole in the center of these. So I've got my punch block that's got a hole in here and I'm using my awl. I'm going to punch this just a little hole in the middle of these. So you need you need roughly four of them, but it also depends on how wide this is, whether you need four or more. So this is what you do. Take a washer, put the washer on the shaft, you feed it through, then you take one of the arms, feed it through. We're going to put two washers between the arms.
and the other arm. And then one more washer on the outside. So there you have the crank. Now if you watch if you watch the bottom of these as I turn the crank you'll see these arms move up and down. Okay, and that's basically what's going to get the wings to do this action here. So, here's one that I did earlier. <laughs> I like to cheat. And this one, this one's pretty much ready. So now what you're going to do is you're going to start to assemble the framework. So you've got, you've got one of these, got one of these, and you're going to glue it to the edge like this. But before you do that, what we need to do is we need to punch a hole because this is where this arm's going to come out of. To turn into the crank. So I'll show you how that works. So here's one that's already done, gone through that process. So I've, what I've done is I've, I've laid this on the edge of this. I've marked a center line on the inside of this so I know exactly where the middle of that is, which gives me equal crank movement within this hole. So I take that, I've done that. I've punched my hole. You can see I've drawn a line at three inches. I've drawn a line at one inch here and I've punched a hole with my block, with my awl. And it's not too big, so it's just right for the wire. So now, I'm ready to start threading this part into the framework. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that, so the six inch ones, are the ones that are up and down at either end. The bottom, you just need to fill in the space between that part and that part. And that's going to get glued to your base here. At the top, what you want to do is you want to leave a space because the arms are going to come through to move. And on this one, you can see where I've cut a bit of cutout here. So those arms, they move within those slots. If I didn't do that, they would hit the corners of these, or I'd have to make this narrower, because the space between the rods is important. So that's done. So we can thread this through. Right, this through like that. And then we're ready to glue this part on. This is, and this is the one that's already got the hole in the right position. If for some reason you aren't very accurate, at least mark which way is up and down. So one hole isn't here and the other one's down there. Otherwise your crank's not gonna move smoothly. I know that because I've done that a lot. <laughs> okay, and, and again, this is something that you learn from having results that don't work. So I'm going to hot glue this in place.
going to put this right in here. And I'm just going to look down inside the frame to make sure that my lines match up. Can you see that pencil line there? Lines up. So now I can take the end of the crank here and push it through that hole and basically I don't know if you can see it but the the crank arms actually go into this surface here which is why we've cut that hole out so essentially we're ready to glue this part on here but before we do that what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this crank is in the very center of this 6x6 and what I've done is I've decided that we're going to use bottle caps as capture points on the outside here and there and that's basically going to keep this thing from shifting as we use it so I've got my bottle caps I need to punch a couple of small holes So I use my awl and I punch just a tiny hole big enough for the wire. Okay, so so if you have an awl, it might be thicker than this. So this is actually an ice pick and I, whenever I find these I buy them and I, I fix them up so that I can use them for this kind of work because I do book binding as well and sometimes you need some really small holes. So these bottle cap washers, they're going to capture the crank right in the middle there. How we do that is with good old hot glue. So I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to put it right on the shaft. And the bottle cap. Okay, so, and if you, as you know, you can't use something that you've hot glued right away because sometimes the glue takes a while to cool. And if you don't let it cool and you start using it, you can move it out of position. So I'm going to just leave that set and cool. And I'm going to glue this other part here to enclose this box. So again, we put hot glue on these parts here. And we put this, and the only line, the only place that's kind of critical is the bottom. So I've just made sure that the bottom is nice and flat. If you're a little bit out here, that doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter to me. Again, you can be as accurate or as free will as you like. How it works is probably the most important thing. So now, this is pretty much ready start using. I'm not going to turn this because I want to make sure that glue is nice and hard on those bottle caps. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down to the base. And I'm just going to eyeball where I think the middle is and just draw some pencil line here. Put 
put some hot glue in the, on the inside of those lines. And glue the frame down to the base. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of what we're using here. I'm going to bend this down and into an angle next. Um, so, because this looks so long that it's going to hit that, I'm going to cut it a bit shorter. So I'm going to bend this at right angles to the shaft first. And I'm going to bend this down. Okay, so <laughs> I always have to giggle because when it works, I always say, Oh, cool, that worked. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to glue the bat onto the frame. Okay, this is so this is ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend I'm going to bend these out a little bit. And when you do that, make sure that the crank is at the bottom of its movement. So when you turn the crank, the rods only come up. If you bent these at the top, when you turn the crank, they're going to hit the insides of here. This is something I've learned from many times doing it incorrectly or differently. I'm going to bend these down a little bit more. So this is something that's kind of difficult to calculate unless you're an aer aeronautical engineer, which I'm not. I'm more of a puppet and toy maker. So again, I'm going to mark where this is. So I can hot, put hot glue down and then sort of push it in place. I'll just leave that sit for a little while. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to actually attach the ends of these rods to the wings. So the easiest way I found, which I did on this one this morning, is on the underside of the wings basically just use some tape and I bent the end of the rod at an L. So when this moves, the rods, they don't move any other way other than perpendicular to the movement of the wings, if that makes sense. So on this one, 
what we're going to do is we're going to bend the arms. Can you see how the rods make contact? So what we're going to do is we're going to bend this end of this rod that way. So I'm carefully going to set this down. Take my needle nose pliers. I'm going to bend the end of this towards the bottom of the of the bat. Like that. So when it makes contact with the wing, I'm just going to put a piece of tape over the over this little part here. Okay, so can you see that there? So now I'm going to take some tape. And this is just regular electrical tape. You can use masking tape, scotch tape. You can use the labels off the milk cartons after you've made the dragon and have those sticky label tape things left over. So I'm going to cut a couple of pieces here. And I'm going to just capture the end of that rod with this tape. Now the other thing that's important is looking in here, the crank is at the bottom, which is what you're wanting, because if I had it at the top, when I turn the crank, it's going to pull the wings down even further. So here's what I'm suggesting. We're going to take this, we're going to turn it upside down. We're going to let the wings settle. Actually, we'll bring them down just a little bit. And then I'm going to put this piece of tape over that loop on the underside here. This is going to be kind of hard to see unless we all stand on our heads. That's one. Now this is a trick I learned when I'm working on cars. You do everything by totally feel. So I can feel where that wire is with my finger. Without having to look too much, capture that wire on the underside of the wings. So now we're ready for a test flight. So here we go. Aha! <laughs> the, lo the, <coughs> the rods are too long because I can't lift this wing high enough to get all the way around the top. So here's what we do. We're going to pull this off. Tape that wing. Tape that arm to that wing again. And this is how you can adjust the movement of the wings by adjusting the length of these crank arms. Still a bit too long.
So we'll do one more adjustment. And you'll know what to do, whether it works or not. <laughs> Prove my theory, but I think it's the way they come out of the frame that needs to be adjusted. So as you can see here, it's bent there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend them further here, So I can actually get the crank to go all the way around. And that's the only thing about making these kind of things. Is sometimes you have to just sort of fiddle with your progress to make sure everything's working the way you would like it to work. Yes, this is something that I might have to pull apart or just straighten the wires out and reattach them. But anyway, um, I think rather than you watching me just sort of fiddle around here, you get the idea of how this works. So these arms, when the crank moves up, they go down, and when the crank goes down, the wings come down. Sort of like that. So that's basically as far as I'm going to take you today. And in terms of decorating this, you can cover it or paint it. Um, you can make the base a little bit more fancy. Um, anything you like. So, yeah, just have fun with it. And something. And the more you do things like this, the more you think about how you use the materials for something that is quite fun. Okay, thanks for watching. And remember, every little bit of untrashed helps. <laughs>